Hello everyone, Arwen from Even Star with another chakra focused Facebook Live. This evening I'm talking all about one of my favourite systems, the heart chakra, because it's all about love. <clears throat> it's um, the energy centre that is that governs and is associated with our ability to both give and receive love. Um, so pretty crucial to our existence as a tribal species. <clears throat> so um, I discovered when I was doing my studies for this system that the heart is actually the first organ to develop in um, the embryo of uh, human species that grows inside the womb so the heart actually develops before even the brain which is pretty amazing when you think about it and um, the heart is our fourth chakra so we have three chakras three energy centers below and three any energy centers above and so it can also be seen as the bridge between the body which the, the bottom three chakras are more associated with and the spirit the mind and the spirit with the top three chakras so it is um, literally very central to everything to do with our well-being um, we have to love ourselves first we can't love other people on in a way that is going to last and going to be healthy for us if we don't love ourselves first so that's really I'm um, look I'm often talking about self-love and it's something that most of us have to work work on I'm certainly not perfect at it myself um, but it is something to be conscious of and be really aware of so the heart chakra is the air element chakra and when you think about it, that space is associated with the heart, uh, the physical heart, obviously, and the lungs, the whole respiratory system. So the whole um, process of what we do with air is looked after by that system. It develops in our 30s um, roundabout, so we become more um, attuned to that and it becomes more important within our lives in our 30s and if you think about it that's the time that a lot of people sort of partner up begin to have their own family and, and love is really really important at that stage of life and um, it's so it's located right in the middle of your chest if you didn't know that and is green it's our green chakra so associated with green it's green on the spectrum of light and um, on this on the that's the vibration that the heart chakra works at and um, as with the other three videos that I've already done on the bottom three chakras I'm going to talk tonight about extremes of um, imbalance so a very overactive heart chakra or a very underactive sh heart chakra just to give you a flavor of what that could look like for you or in people that you may know and love and um, also obviously talking about what we can do to try and bring balance back in <clears throat> So first thing I'll talk about is passion and compassion. So if we have um, a very overactive heart chakra, that can be indicated by um, feeling passionate, feeling strongly about many things, about most things, uh, and being... Um, you know that whole that that whole word or words of feeling strongly is what our heart chakra is all about so we're also able to strongly experience the emotions of others so that's the compassion side there's a lot of empathy and you know it's that thing of if you see somebody else is upset you actually become upset yourself um you However, if we're doing this and we're kind of opening ourselves up to everybody else's emotions all the time, that is energetically draining. And on an emotional scale, that can actually lead us to become resentful if we don't think that others are showing that same level of compassion and empathy for us. We... On the other end of the scale, so an underactive heart chakra is going to be therefore the opposite of, of those extremes and it's going to be somebody who is um, lacking in empathy, doesn't know, doesn't understand, doesn't care how, how other people around them are feeling. <clears throat> 
They can't relate to that. They might be viewed as cold by other people. They also may have a, a general approach to life of, you know, like a poor me approach, um, assuming that any pain or um, negative emotions that they're experiencing must be worse than what anybody else could possibly ever experience and that other people will not understand how they're feeling either because they don't understand other people so they don't think that's a thing and um, they also tend to be very unforgiving both of themselves and of others. So that's our underactive heart chakra. Then the next thing to think about is heart versus head. So if you are somebody who your heart always rules over your head, you always go with, with how you feel, with the emotional side of things rather than what the logical, rational side, the head side is saying, then that can ind indicate overactivity. And of course, at the other end, if you're always going with the head, overruling the heart, not taking any notice of the heart, not trusting your heart, uh, then that can indicate an underactivity. And usually that um, feeling of not trusting the heart, it's because we can be overwhelmed and scared of being overwhelmed by emotion. And that is certainly an indication of underactivity. The next thing is how wide open do you hold your arms and your heart to everyone around you? Are you always trying to include everybody in everything? Are you always giving away all your love? Are you um, therefore potentially making yourself quite vulnerable to being hurt because you're so open, your heart is so big and, and all encompassing to everyone around you? That is clearly an overactive type. If, on the other hand, you tend to shut other people out, you tend to um, have an inability to experience love. And potentially, this is often because in the past, and especially in our young years, we have felt rejected. We have had a negative experience of love that then we shut our heart off and we can't give or receive love. People with the overactive uh, heart chakra may also be people who are considered very touchy-feely. They like to hug everybody and kiss everybody. They like, to, they like physical touch a lot. So, excuse me, I'll just turn that off. Um, if you, on the other hand, do not um, like to be touched and do not touch other people very readily, then that can be an indication of underactivity. If you are always focusing on serving other people, on making other people feel good, on making sure other people have everything that they want to need, that is another indication of overactivity. And on the other end of the scale, if you like other people to look after you, to care for you, to serve you, then that can indicate an underactivity. And uh, you might be thinking to yourself, hmm, that sounds like a lot of mums that I know. And you would be absolutely right. It is very, very easy for us mums to have an imbalanced heart chakra because especially while your children are still growing up and living with you, then it's really difficult to prioritise your own needs. And you really always, you know, you want your children to be happy. You want to make them happy. You want to give them what they need. And it's very hard to put yourself first. So we need to be careful though, again, that if we're constantly putting others first, then we are not, um, we need to take care that we don't end up resenting this and becoming bitter because we feel that nobody else is looking after us like we are looking after them. So uh, what are some physical characteristics of an imbalanced heart chakra? Well, unsurprisingly, any issues to do with your heart. Um, so it might be a physical abnormality. It might be um, a heart rate issue. Um, you, any, so any heart conditions, if you've got um, problems in your arteries leading to your heart, anything to do with the heart. 
Um, a big one is generalised anxiety. So you might think that this would belong more in our solar plexus, our third chakra, and it certainly is very associated. And we have to remember that always there is a flow of the energy between all the chakras and that, that the third and the fourth chakra are certainly paired up anyway. So if you are somebody who would um, recognize yourself as someone who has generalized anxiety and that is a lot of people these days then heart chakra can come into that and can indicate that imbalance respiratory condition so as we said it's the air element chakra and so anything to do with respiratory the respiratory system with the lungs um, with breathing in general asthma any other breathing conditions, any other lung conditions. Sleep apnea is another one that's effectively a breathing condition and that can be an indication of heart chakra imbalance. Poor circulation, so again to do with res respiration, so if you have any circulatory problems that can be an indication of a heart issue. Hot or cold hands, which again is to do with circulation. So if your hands are always hot or always cold, or your feet, those extremities, that can indicate heart chakra imbalance. Blood pressure issues. Um, and also we're, we're looking at anything to do with the chest. So um, any injuries, rib injuries, um, and breast problems. So any, any issues in the breast area. And also the arms and the hands are governed by this chakra. So if you have problems with arms and hands, and if we think about that, that's um, symbolically to do with how we handle things, how we look after things. Can we wrap our arms around what we're dealing with or not? Um, and if, if not, or perhaps you think you can, but you're not, you've got a, a sore elbow or a problem with your hand, maybe you're not handling it as well as you think you might be. So then the key is what can we do about this? Excuse me, shuffling my head around. So as I said, heart is green. So as we've done with all of these things, we're looking at green foods. So the um, picture I put on my Facebook post was this kind of slightly ugly picture of a heart made out of vegetables, of green vegetables, but that's what we want to eat a lot of if we've got any imbalance. And we want to eat a lot of it anyway because it's really good for us. So make sure you get at least five servings of vegetables a day and making sure you get all different colours of vegetables on your plate, vegetables and fruits, but especially the green ones if you think that any of those things are sounding like you with heart chakra imbalance. And then... On the other side of food is the preparation of food. We want to prepare food with love and that can be for you. So rather than just giving yourself a piece of toast because you can't be bothered cooking a meal for yourself, prepare something with love. Prepare something that you really want to eat for yourself with love or prepare a meal for others with love. Let somebody else prepare a meal for you. And then also with that love is expressing gratitude for our food before we eat it. So it sounds really old fashioned to lots of us to say grace before a meal, but in fact, giving, giving gratitude and my children always hate it when I make them do that, but it's such a beautiful thing to do to, to thank the earth for providing that food and just to thank the food for being there on your plate. So I'd really encourage you to do that, especially if you've, sounding like you're imbalanced movement obviously we're dealing with the heart the cardiovascular system so we want to move our bodies to get that going um, so make sure you're doing something that does get your heart rate up if you got you don't have an overactive heart um, and then something that brings it down like a yoga or um, swimming perhaps something a bit more gentle and calm Making sure you're moving your arms. So making sure you, so if you are somebody who likes to walk or likes to run, you might need to do something as well to actually move your arms in addition to your legs or make sure you're at least swinging them a lot. Um, and then breathing as well, because we're dealing with the lungs and the air element, we really want to focus on breath with the heart. So I'm going to put a link. I do have a video of some breathing exercises that I did some time ago. So I'll put a link to that because doing things like alternate nostril breathing can be really great for balancing the breath and balancing that heart chakra. 
Sleep is a beautiful way to activate your parasympathetic nervous system, as I say, pretty much every week. Um, and this is going to help to regulate your heart rate. So you need to get out of that fight and flight state to regulate heart. Um, and obviously, if you are relating to that generalized anxiety thing, then sleep is super, super important, prioritizing sleep. Surroundings, lots of fresh air. So getting into a space that has lots of plants producing fresh oxygen for you, preferably getting away from pollution, away from toxins within your home as well. Um, and yeah, making sure that what you're breathing in is fresh and taking big lungfuls of it. I have crystals and essential oils that I can recommend that are going to be listed on my blog that I do for this um, video. So if you want to look at them, then please have a look at that. And if you can't wait, then send me a message and I'll send you something um, in a private message yourself. So other things to do, obviously meditation, again, I do recommend this all, all the time because it's so wonderful and scientifically proven now to be absolutely brilliant for improving well-being. Obviously, with heart, we want to do a breath-focused meditation, ideally. So um, try and find something which is bringing you to focus on the breath. You can do it yourself, just very simply bringing your focus to your breath reduce the expectations that anything um, is going to happen as far as shutting off your mind. Our minds don't work like that. So just keep bringing that focus back to your breath and breathing right down into your belly and right back up again. Um, affirmations. I've got a few great affirmations such as my heart cannot be damaged. It will heal me. And again, I'll put the rest of them in my blog post. Um, a gratitude journal is a really beautiful thing to do or just getting a gratitude practice into your day. So saying things like three things you're grateful for at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, you might like to write them down, you might like to say them aloud, you can just think of them in your head. Just that action of trying to think of what am I grateful for stimulates all the beautiful relaxation hormones that we want to have going through our bodies. And obviously, energy healing is brilliant for uh, balancing any of our chakras. So if you would like to book in for a session with me, then please do that. If you would like any more information, there's a lot on my website. I do also have vouchers available which make great Christmas presents if you're trying to find one for somebody that you can't think of what they would like. And as an advocate for giving people experiences rather than more stuff, I would obviously recommend that. So I wish you all lots of love for our heart chakra section. And if you've got any questions, please let me know. But otherwise, sleep well, meditate first, be grateful, and I will talk to you again very soon.